Our guest today is a true front row entrepreneur. He is the founder and director of StudioOneDesign.com, a world-leading website design and branding agency based in Australia with 28 people who are passionate about designing really, really great-looking websites that convert cold visitors into hot leads and sales for their clients. Welcome to the show, Greg Merrilies. Thank you so much, Jen, for having me. It's so awesome to be here. Yeah, I've been listening to your yeah, podcast it's... and I think it's great. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so <laughs> yeah. flattered. Um, well, years ago, you and I had a Zoom call or it could have even been like Blab or Google Plus or, you know, <laughs> one of those ancient platforms because it was so long ago. But you came yeah. to my attention again when I interviewed Joe Fear of the um, Hustle and Flow podcast. Yes. And... I flipped out. So I was doing research, you know, as, as one does before the podcast episode. And, uh, and I took a look at his website and I immediately emailed him and I was like, who did your website? It is off the chart. Gorgeous. <laughs> really, really unique. And he said, um, of course he, he mentioned that you did it. And I was like, right then and there, I knew I had to have you on the show that I could ask you all. So I could ask you all about your website philosophies and your thoughts on website conversions and what you think are the must haves and what you might, what you think might be a waste of time. Sure. So sound good? Yeah. I'd love to dive into that. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Well, my guess is that like 99% of the people listening right now want their websites to do a lot of the heavy lifting for them in their business. And by heavy lifting, I mean, you know, their personal brands or their service providers, or they have online businesses and they want their websites to basically turn website visitors into customers. Is that what you would define as a conversion focused website? Yeah, 100%. So basically, you know, you've gone to the old days of just having a brochure website, like nobody really has that anymore. If they do, they should be updating it. Uh, but basically, a website has a purpose, like it is a very important marketing asset in your business today. It's generally either the first place where people will discover you, or if they do discover you, they will go to your website to check you out. So the problem is, though, there's a lot of competitors in every niche. So you know, if you think about any like authority, like your website, Jen, beautiful, like you got, uh, you've invested in good design and, and good video and good photography and all those things make you look like an authority, right? And so when you look at any authority in their niche, they have like a, a pro level design, pro level copywriting as well, which is something we can talk about. But uh, yeah, it's really important mm. to also think about like the intent of the visitor and give them a pathway that's right for them. And there's various ways we can do that based on, you know, their intent. If they're cold, warm or hot, we have different funnels which we can unpack as well. But yeah, essentially your website is an asset and it should be designed uh, as a marketing machine instead of just a, a web a brochure website. So when you say brochure website, you're talking about the website that basically has you know, the picture of the, of you, and then like a, a paragraph about you yes. and then like a link to all your socials and maybe your phone number. That That's what you mean, right? Yeah. Or really it's thinking about, um, you know, when, when a brochure website is really when it's all about you, like you just mentioned, but it's your products, mm -hmm. your service, you're talking about how good th you, you know, your offer is or whatever it is, product services. Um, without thinking about what's in it for them, the audience member. So yeah, it's really just flipping it from being all about you to all about how you can help them. Can you, can you sort of speak to that for a second? Like yeah. an example of what that looks like or sounds like? Absolutely. So there's a really good book, Building a Story Brand, which a lot of people know by Donald Miller. And what he says in that book is be the guide, not the hero. So when you think about the copy on your website, what you want, even if it's a personal brand website, you still want to be seen as somebody that's helpful, somebody that uh, the messaging on your website is all about how you can help them. What Because they only care about what's in it for them. They don't care about you initially, right? Um, right. So if you think uh, the wording on your website, you can do a test. If you're writing a lot of I, me, we uh, versus you, know, you your, et cetera, uh, then 
if you count more eyes and we's than using yours, then the website's more about you and your offer rather than how you can help them, right? So you need a little bit of eyes and we's, but you also need to make sure it's more about them. So that's one little test you can do. But if you think about uh, when somebody is on your website and they only care about what's in it for them, you want to let them know, uh, you know, how you can like how they will benefit from your offer, how you can help them and why they should choose you over your competitors. And there's another book, Robert Cialdini's book, Influence, which, you know, we also, there's a lot of principles in that that we put into every website. We can unpack that if you want. But one of them is the scarcity principle. Now, a lot of people think that's just about a limited time offer or a limited amount of seats, et cetera, a lim limited supply. But what, what he really means is what can somebody get from you that's unique that they can't get from your competitors? So when you think about the wording on your website, if you can address that, it's quite hard to find out what is unique about you because you might be selling you know, something that is almost like a commodity that every, everybody else has. But if you interview your best customers, you'll find, or if you read somebody's, you know, thousand testimonials, whatever, you'll find the uniqueness amongst that. And you can use AI tools to research these things to pull out that uniqueness. But you want to, yeah, let people know what is unique about your offer and how they'll benefit from it. Yeah. And I'm not familiar with the book Influence, you said it was, right? Yeah. But yeah. I, I am I am familiar with, very familiar with Donald Miller's book and I love it. Um, and one thing that he talks about that I love is, so what you just mentioned, that that unique that unique thing that makes you yes. stand out that Donald Miller has that in the top third and it's like a sentence and it's very clear and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's as stripped away and as stripped down as it can possibly be. So, you know, best peanuts in Georgia. I mean, I don't know where that came from, but yeah, like, I love <laughs> you know, don't know anybody who's selling peanuts, but I mean, super simple with a very simple, clear, big, fat button call to action. Yes. Um, I'm no website guru. Okay. But I work with clients who need help with marketing and stuff. And so just having a basic familiarity with those concepts, sometimes I will say, well, first of all, read the book. And secondly, you know, you want to think about this, having a very clear, concise thing about your unique thing at the top. And then one, think about what is the number one call to action that you want to put on this button. But that is so much harder than it sounds it really it is, really is yeah. you know i sort of send them on their way but i don't do that do it for them because i have a hard enough time figuring that out on my own website you know and yeah. um yeah so how do you pick like what is the the one button if you believe that you maybe you don't yeah look i mean to a degree it depends uh, like if you're just talking about a home page it just needs to be a really clear and concise because clarity is everything on a website right a lot of people write copy themselves and it's usually they're too close to it so they just use tech jargon or they try to be fancy with a little tagline that you know like they might see nike has or whatever <laughs> just do it but whatever right, you know what right. i mean but they're just being too clever. And so if you think about trying to be clever versus having clarity, clarity wins all the time, but it yes. can be quite a process. And that's why obviously you can use tools like, you know, ChatGPT or Claude or one of those other AI LLMs to uh, re do market research. But realistically, I believe you should be hiring a professional copywriter that will really dive deep into understanding you, your uniqueness, your business, your offer, your audience, the pain, their pain points, how you solve their problem. And there, there will be a uniqueness in that, but it does take a little bit of research and, and diving deep. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, and it's, I feel like as we grow too, as business owners, entrepreneurs, um, the people who own the websites, like, you know, we're not, we're not static individuals. Um, yeah. So like my website, I think still says I have three kids at home. And also <laughs> like our philosophies change. And so, you know, and I think it's um, sometimes it can be like uh, for marketers, the, what is it? The carpenter's son has no shoes, you know, <laughs> yes. that we're, you know, we're yeah, yeah. talking about all this stuff. So, so what I'm trying to say listeners is please don't go look at my website, but um <laughs> But uh, all right, so let's talk about um, how do you, so how do you know, what is, when you're auditing someone's website, what, what jumps out at you is like, ooh, this is another one of those big stinkers that everybody makes or a lot of people make on their website. What, what are those, what are the must not do's? 
Yeah, there, there are quite a few. And by the way, your website is not terrible. And if I just want to like reiterate the fact that with a home page, sure, you want to get across what's unique about you and what they can't get anywhere else. But then think about it as a gateway because you don't know the intent, right? So you want to show people uh, your offers and it might be a lead magnet. It might be a, a product. It might be, you know, your your book or whatever the case is, right? You might have mm -hmm, a bunch mm -hmm. of various offers. So all you really need to do with the homepage is clearly articulate what it is that you offer, back it up with social proof, and then have, you know, various options for them to get to whatever's right for their intent. So for instance, uh, we like to cater to cold, warm, and hot traffic. So if you think about like your, your homepage, right, it's fine as is. You've got the top nav, which is, you know, relatively clear as well. And then you have individual pages there's a bunch of different uh, urls which is probably a bit of a disconnect yes. but <laughs> and yes. probably a nightmare yes. to manage yeah yes. but you know there's probably a reason for that as well because you, you have your paid offer on a on a uh, membership platform etc but the point is um on some of those landing pages for your vips and and your you know all the various things that you offer you've got decent copy on there right so to me that's it's extremely important so you don't need all that stuff on your home page but when it comes to the individual landing pages for your offers that's where it really counts so what what we'll do if we <clears throat> excuse me if we audit a website sure we're going to think about it from a conversion perspective but we also think about um you know how it will rank on it on google essentially forget bing mm. right so minor right google but so therefore <clears throat> excuse me it's a bit of a a mix between having enough content on the page so that Google can read it and understand what you're all about um, versus just having the right amount of information to give clarity and to send people, you know, on a, on a path that's right for them. But I would say on the individual landing pages, that's where you need more, you know, more information. So if we mm -hmm. do audit a website, we're going to think about the traffic, think about their intent. Do you have a, a funnel for like a, a cold visitor, like a lead magnet of some sort to warm them up, something that you're going to offer uh, extreme value for in return for an email address? And then what are the steps off the back of that to help build trust in your brand? And it's going to be different for every, uh, you know, every business type because, some businesses, it might take five years before a lead becomes a client, right? Like they may True. have listened to your, yeah. yeah, for your, they may have listened to your podcast. And then, you know, a few years later, they say, oh, I found you on your podcast three years ago or whatever. And now I'm a client, <laughs> right? So um, the point is, you just want to lead with value. You want to warm people up, but you also want to make it easy for people that are ready to buy. So having your uh, product pages, having your pricing, things like that, just giving them an easy, easy pathway to pay your money, essentially. You don't want to have to be doing a whole bunch of unnecessary calls or back and forths or emails, et cetera, if you can just give them a clear pathway to buy from you. So think about what their intent is, have a pathway for cold and hot visitors. Oh, okay. I want to talk about this for a second. So I yeah. went to traffic and conversion this past, whenever it was, and yeah. Ryan Dice got on the stage and he led with this thought. He said, forget the funnel not to say that the funnels are dead because of course they're not like sure. we're gonna have a funnel we're gonna have a sequence all of that but yes. he said qualify immediately right mm -hmm. like ask your qualifying questions immediately because yes. some people don't need to be warmed up they need your service now they want it now let them buy now and go ahead and figure out who those people are and so that. i've been chewing on this for maybe it's almost a year. I don't know when that was, but I, you know, I don't know exactly how I would do that, but are you thinking about that? Are you doing yes. that with some of your clients on yeah. your clients pages? Can you give us a case study or an Absolutely. example? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I think like for a coach, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, with a coach, for instance, right? If we don't know their intent, what we do want to do is similar to what Ryan Dice said, you want to ask them some questions. And so what we will generally do is have a call to action on the homepage and it might be, you know, insert benefit to find out if you need help with X, whatever you do, but a shorter, like there might be a sentence before it and then a call to action that relates to that sentence. But what you're trying to do is get them to answer some questions. So they click a button, there'll be a pop-up that'll ask a series of questions, right? You can use Typeform or these other tools, but you can also just code it directly onto your website, especially if you're using tools like Elementor. But the point is, more importantly, you want to ask some questions that 
are going to make them feel like you understand their situation. So for instance, you know, for, I'm just thinking about one case study is, uh, uh, he's a love coach. He helps smart, successful women find love, right? Uh, find marriage and things like that. Is that, that Evan? Love. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was, you know, I was okay, in a cool. program with Evan. He, we were in a <laughs> mastermind together. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Love it. Okay, cool. So yeah, what we did was put this, um, you know, I'll just go to his website so I can see the exact word and so I can let the audience oh, yes. know what that is. But basically it's just a, a simple button. It says, take the quiz to find love now, right? And then the first question, which best describes you? I've never been married uh, or I'm divorced, separated or widowed. So they select one of those options. And so this is their situation. And then next thing we're talking about, their problem. I don't know if you know the book Spin Selling by Neil Rackham, but it's um, mm -hmm. it's an acronym, S-P-I-N, Situation, Problem, Implication, Need. And this is kind of what we're trying to get across. What was the I, Implication? Implication, yeah. So what it means is, okay. I'll, I'll just unpack a little bit. So uh, people want to know when they land on your website that you understand the situation they're in. This all comes from good copy and good design uh, and that you understand the problems that they face and the implications if they don't address the cause of the problem or if they don't try to solve mm -hmm. it. And N is the need, which is your solution to that problem, your unique solution. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you think about uh, Donald Miller's building a story brand, it's the same framework, but it's told in a different way. It's more a story, SP7 framework. Uh, but what he's trying to say there is you have a guide, um, sorry, you are the guide, and then you're sending people, they, they get a choice. They can either go this path where, you know, nothing will change if they just keep doing the same mistakes or they choose the wrong solution, or you go this path and here's how we can uniquely help you. So it's just a similar framework. Um, Similar outcome, but different framework. Mm -hmm, so basically, mm -hmm. then uh, Evan asks, um, which best describes your current relationship situation? I'm taking a much needed break. I'm, I'm dating, but can't blah, blah, blah. I'm in a relationship, but uh, I'm not completely happy. So basically, you're just selecting all of these, um, you know, one, two or three options, right? And then what is your age? And it's got a, an age bracket. Uh, and then, you know, how important is it for you to solve this problem today? And then the last question, and all these things are just letting people feel like, oh, wow, this guy is going to have a solution that's, you know, specifically to my situation and my problem right now. Um, he says, the last question, what do you need right now? I'm looking for love and want to work with Evan ASAP. I'm looking for free dating and relationship advice. So back to Ryan Dice, <clears throat> what we're trying to do here is for people that are ready to buy, we're going to give them a direct path. But people that aren't ready to buy, don't waste their time or yours by sending mm. them to a free call. Just give them some free stuff. So based on what they selected previously, um, then if, if they press the free thing, then they're going to get an ebook that's relevant to what they selected previously. So it's you know quite quite smart. And yeah, the, he said that this tripled his opt-in rates having this little. Um, oh this little wow, tuber. that's amazing! Yeah, exactly, amazing yeah. and. Yeah, I just that just reminded me of um I did do a qualifying thing with we have a really successful PDF that we run Facebook ads to. And when I say successful, I mean I get like a dollar leads. However, yes. the problem is so the title of the PDF is like 160 things you can outsource to a virtual assistant, okay? Yes. So um the problem is that I would say 50% of the people that have been downloading this are virtual assistants. A hundred percent, not yeah. my client, like mm -hmm. at yeah. all. So I don't even care. I don't even need to be giving them a freebie. I don't need to be clogging up my convert kit mm. with these people who are just going to cost me money. Right. Yeah. However, I figured out a way that I kind of monetize that. And what I do is I send them to a client of mine who trains people how to be successful VAs Perfect. and we have an affiliate situation set up. So I'm not saying Love I'm it. making a ton of money off of this, but yeah. at least it's not completely wasted and I've helped them because I'm sending them to a great resource. So, huh, I forgot about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we could do that like right from the beginning on the website with a quiz or even with like just some radio buttons maybe or or are those a thing of the past? I don't even know. Uh, look, what it I'm can be a about. radio button for a choice, but yeah, I mean, look, these days you can pretty much custom design anything and it's quite yeah, easy yeah. to have a, you know, half competent developer build it. Or you could use, like I said, a, a type form, which is a third-party tool. But um, yeah, there's so many different ways you can 
uh, yeah, segment people essentially. But yeah, it's really meeting them where they're at and then you just send them on a pathway that's right for them. Um, I know another SEO expert has a similar thing. He has people that just want to learn from him, right? So, you know, he wrote, he wrote this book, um, which has thousand pages right on seo wow did yeah, you yeah. read that book i won't tell no, him but did he you? <laughs> uh, presents on stage all the time and he hands it out and people just hire him because they say who wrote like, it stefan spencer who? okay yeah, wow he co-authored it but yeah he's uh very yeah i think there's three authors but yeah the point is um what we do on on his website is um he has a lot of people that just want to learn from him, but he also, his end goal is to have clients, you know, pay him thousands of dollars each month for his services or for his agency services or his coaching, et cetera. So we have a series of questions that's going to pretty much filter out the people that just want to learn from him and he won't send them to, you know, book a call with him because they would be a waste of time. So yeah, there's various ways you can uh, filter out people and it's just by asking a series of questions, similar to Ryan Dice's approach. So I like that a lot. Okay. All right. Now I have just a couple of um, random things floating around in my head that I would like yeah. to ask you about. <laughs> um, what do you, Greg Merrilies, the website expert do when you land on a website and you either accept all the cookies or, do, or do you, or do you mess around with it to actually, cause I don't <laughs> even know. I'm like, I just accept all the cookies from all the yeah. places all the time. Am I, do you do that too? I do, or I do the same, be, but then I do clear okay. my cookies if I, if I get sick of seeing the same ads, I'll just clear my cookies once a month or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Because I guess yeah. that's not going away anytime soon. Like we have to have that ugly <laughs> thing on our website or we yeah. get in trouble with GDPR and all of that, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And you can get in trouble with so much, so much more these days. Like if your website's not ADA compliant, you know, for people that have that are visually impaired, there's a lot of things that you need to do to make sure people can navigate just with your keyboard, you know, with their keyboard, I should say. Um, so yeah, there's a lot and a lot of people getting sued because their website's not ADA compliant, even smaller businesses these days. So you have to be, have you had any clients, uh, get sued? Yes, I have. Yes. Yes. So yeah. Um, not one of our, So does that mean everything needs to be like, we need to have an audio version of everything on our website? Well, look, it's the people that are visually impaired. They will have an audio tool on, you know, that they'll use as a plugin across their browser so they can apply it to any website. So you don't Mm -hmm. need to put those extra things on your website, but you just need to make sure, uh, you know, even little things like font size, you know, some people may be able to see, but not that well. So, and also the other thing is you might have a target audience that's over 40 and they may, you know, have difficult reading small fonts, right? So like me. Yep. And yeah. (laughs) Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, just think about your audience and be as helpful as possible with font size right. and the contrast as well of your of, of your fonts. Make sure it's dark on on, you know, light background, high contrast as opposed to just yeah, mid color uh on a dark background. That's the worst thing you could do. But yeah, there's a lot of little things like that that uh, will help it, you know, be more usable. I was on a strategy call the other day with my group and uh, one of my students uh, uh, shared with us a really horrifying thing that happened to her on her website. She had shared an image. I think she might've even shared it on social media in the fashion that one does share, right? Like you repost yep. or whatever. I mean, attribution was not taken away from the original sharer or even the creator. I think there was, you know, there was, it said like this person took this picture or whatever. And I can't remember the name of this company, but man, they're, the way that they're set up is like, you can't win because they fine you. It doesn't, it's not enough for you to take down whatever image they they fine you anyway. They find a lot of, so for this one little image, she just had to pay like three or $400, but you know, there are people that are getting chased down by this private company and being asked, being forced to pay five ten thousand dollars have you have they been have yeah. any of your clients approached? absolutely yeah so we we had a t-shirt design website which is kind of how we started in business but yeah and we had the same issue we accidentally used an image in our blog post and yeah we had lawyers hunt us down and and they didn't stop but we just ignored them and they went away <laughs> so you can't just do oh that. okay that, well there's yeah, one method that's their business model you know they just hunt these every website and they just put down this you know power of the law and i don't know to me yeah it's you don't have to pay them personally you can can all right all right well that's actually 
that's actually comforting and good to hear. Yeah, All just right. take it um, down. Yeah. Pop-ups or no pop-ups? Uh, yeah, great question. So pop-ups are generally annoying if when you first land on somebody's website, it is a pop-up. It's like, well, get out of my face. I don't even know <laughs> what you offer, right? Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so it's super annoying. However, they can be quite effective if they're triggered by one of three methods. So one, the time on the website or web page. So it might be after three minutes, you're going to have a pop-up. And it depends what's in the pop-up. It needs to be something of value, usually a lead magnet of some sort, something free in return for an email. Uh, but then, so that's one trigger. The other trigger would be how far they've scrolled on the page. If it's a, if it's a longish mm. page, um, and let's say it's a landing page for one of your offers and they haven't taken action. They've gone past, you know, they read the, the call to action, the price and whatever, and they're reading um, uh, FAQs and then they're just sitting there for a while. Then you can just literally by having them, by the time they get to the bottom of the page, they, if they haven't taken action, then offer something that's relevant to that offer, but it's like a free version. It needs to be relevant and helpful essentially. Um, and then the third one would be an exit intent. So if people go to leave your website and they haven't taken action, then have triggered by them hovering over the top couple of pixels, have the pop up pop up then. So it's just one last chance to try and get their email. Now, those things do work that you will build your email list by doing that, but just don't ruin brand integ integrity by having them pop up too early. That's the only, mm. yeah, the only issue. Yeah. Okay. Videos autoplay or no? Definitely not. <laughs> so proven conversion killer. Um, they're up there with uh, image sliders, with, you know, crazy parallax effects where, you know, when as you're scrolling, things move around everywhere. It's just so confusing. And so the thing that's most important on a website, more so than the design, is the copywriting. And if you have a moving background, like a, you know, an image slider or, or a moving video, it's too distracting and people, and it will slow down the website as well, which affects your SEO and makes it annoying for people. So there's lots of reasons to never use um, moving video autoplay background, but have video, video is great, but just not autoplay. Um, I love that case study that you shared about Evan and how he tripled his, um, his leads or it was his leads, right? Tripled opt his opt-ins. Yeah. 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 So... Do you have any other little goodie? I love stories like that, like where you made a little tweak or you did something and then they saw huge results. Can you share one or two of those with us? Not I to mean, put you no, on the spot, but. No, that's okay. I mean, look, a lot of the time, like we do, it's more about the strategy involved. So if, um, you know, and, and also we do full re redesigns, but when, before we do a full redesign, we need to really understand the business. We do dive deep and it's a, you know, a big process for that. But it's really just, I would say normally, it's people not having a like some sort of lead magnet that then has a next step. So just offering something on the thank you page can be a huge, you know, conversion booster mm -hmm. for your next thing. So usually people yes. just have download free offer, a uh, free thing, whatever. They go to the thank you page. Thanks for downloading it. Check your email in, in a line of text, right? But if you have a face to camera video, like they've already, they're in the habit of saying yes. So if you offer something else on the page and in the video clearly describe what that next offer is and and let them know what the benefits of that offer are, uh, might be a free call after that, whatever it is, uh, it just depends, you know, what, what your funnel and offer is. But the point is, if you do that, then you're far more likely to get people to take that next step. For us, we just have like, say, it might be a, a, a quiz, et cetera, and then we'll take people to, uh, a, a webinar and they you know, an evergreen webinar they can either watch it then or later it's up to them but we do get people that watch that and then we do get people that fill out uh you know a get a quote form after that basically so yeah so that, yeah. I mean, that's a case study from us it's worked for us but also works for our clients yeah i want to take a big highlighter pen and we're going to highlight that because yeah. i also see that as such a wasted opportunity i always say yeah. like never squander the thank you page it's yes. like you bring someone into your store. Let's say you have a little boutique on Main Street and they come in the door and then you just slam the door in their face. I mean, they come mm. in or, and you just walk away and you go off to the back room. You know, it's <laughs> like they, they've they come into your, your zone and now they're here and, and now yes. you have one absolute opportunity. After that, we don't know if they're going to open up your download. We don't know if they're going to open up your yeah. email, but we know if they opt in, the very next thing that happens is is something comes up on the page so you can grab them with some it, special you know offer that maybe has a t countdown timer on it or yeah, or whatever that's true. 
Absolutely. That can definitely work very well on, on the thank you page, the countdown timer for a limited time offer. And, and just on that, don't if they do opt in for the PDF, for instance, or a downloadable, uh, don't give them that on the thank you page. Just let them know in the video if it's going to be emailed to you in 15 minutes. Meanwhile, watch this video and blah, 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 you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, if somebody were to interview a web designer, and I don't know why they would when they can just go to your page because <laughs> because you do I mean but really you do you do small jobs all the way up to very fancy jobs yeah, right do. you yes. you kind of have something for everyone so yeah. all budgets am I right or wrong yeah absolutely yeah for sure okay. we can do a single page we can do branding yeah whatever's needed yeah the whole thing you have copywriters no we d we work with copywriting partners uh, so we work very closely with them that have the same methodology that that we use yeah all right, so you have the black book of copywriters to hook us yeah, up exactly. with the people who have the source. magical words. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so soup to nuts, you pretty much do it all. So again, I don't know why anybody would go anywhere else, but let's say that they did. What are the three, or do you have like three questions they should ask or things they should look for before they give a deposit or hand over any money? Yeah, absolutely. So what, well, you know, what we do, okay, number one, you want to have a look at their folio. You want to make sure their folio resonates with you as far as the look and feel. Two, have a look at if they work with similar type of businesses that that you are. Um, if not, it doesn't mean they can't. It just, it's more likely that they're going to get a good result. And the next thing is look at all of their, of their results and case studies and things like that because, yeah, that will tell the true picture of, you know, what the – Let's say if you look at a case study, a good case study will show what their situation was like before they came to you, how you helped them, you know, what their problems were, how you actually helped them, and then what the results were. So if you can read a lot of case studies and results um, from a range of businesses and a range of industries, especially yours, then there's a good chance that you are going to get a good res result as well. Now, for us, we offer unlimited design revisions because we understand oh. that design is subjective, right? Um, and sure, we're going to use all of the right conversion elements, but at the same time, we want you to love the design. So, oh, I didn't know that. That's really that is that really sets you apart because <laughs> I know that in so many contracts, when you work with a web designer, they're like four revisions, and you know that's very it's stressful because you feel like it's just stressful. I think it's stressful. Mm. On both for both parties like both parties have to really nail it <laughs> you know mm. and you only get four tries and then and then what you know because i yeah. don't have a code and exactly you know so i might have a flashing light that i don't like anymore and you're you're gonna say like sorry i mean you're not exactly. going to because you don't you don't operate that way but that is yeah. that's that's a very important thing to consider yeah so um, ask them how many revisions do you get and uh <clears throat> if it's not unlimited just yeah, dive a little deeper and just make sure you're comfortable and make sure you like them as well as a person. Uh, make sure they're going to be approachable as well throughout the process. Um, yeah, you want to make sure that they don't just ghost you after after you, you pay them, you know. Right, right. And yeah. I kind of like to see, I like to work with someone who's seasoned and has been at it a while and uh, you yep. for sure are that. Uh, speaking of, so I want to sort of transition into um, this next part of the interview, which sure. is kind of about you as an entrepreneur. And also, um, I want to talk a little bit about the systems that you use in your own business, because we yeah. talk a lot about systems mm -hmm. a lot. Now, you yeah. as an entrepreneur, what I am curious about is, um, as I mentioned in the intro, you have 28 folks uh, that you that you work with. Um, and what year did you start? the the website end of your business 12 uh, sorry yeah, tw 2012 yeah okay so you've been at it a while um how in the world are you managing all these people dealing with major disruption in terms of ai and having to to to, to just to just be ready to just be on yeah. your toes and still drum up business and do all your marketing and all of that how are you doing all of that and you're not burned out? And maybe you are burned out. I don't know. I'm assuming you're not though, because you look very fresh and well. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm 53 years old and um, a lot of people say I don't look that, but uh, yeah. The not point at is, all. 
I, you're going to love this answer because you're a coach, right? I hired a coach. <laughs> so we, yeah, we were t-shirt designers from, I've had the business since the year 2000. And for the first 12 years, we designed t-shirts and then the, the clothing industry shifted and the, the industry went vertical, which just means they cut out the middleman wholesalers and they went and directly to China themselves, basically. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. our clients were the wholesalers and so they were dropping like flies. So I found podcasts and podcasts pretty much saved my my business. So basically there were two business coaches that said their logo sucked on their podcast. So I saw it as an opportunity to design them a new logo and, you know, I had t-shirt design experience. So it made it look really cool on a t-shirt. And then one was for Ezra Firestone from smartmarketer.com and the other yes. one was James wow. Yeah. So they were yeah. both- uh, And James Tramco. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Love him. Yeah. So I ended up hiring James as my coach and then Ezra white labeled us to do all of his uh, clients, e-commerce websites. And we learned a lot there, but uh, yeah. So the, the point is I hired James as that coach, uh, as my coach for the next, you know, up until today. Right. So he taught me everything uh, from how to grow a team, how to, uh, you know, speak from stage. I spoke on Ezra's stage in San Diego, I spoke, spoke on James's stage. Congratulations. In Sydney. Yeah. Thanks. And, and just the word just spread and it, we still get leads from that today. But um, and that's how we ended up designing for Sylvester Stallone through somebody that saw us in the audience that knew what? his marketing department. Rocky Balboa? <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. my gosh. You could just quit everything you're doing and be like, I did it. Like, I, I won. <laughs> yeah. I won. I mean, that's. I mean, Rocky, seriously. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the point is, um, so hiring James, right, as my business coach and learning so much from Ezra as, as well. Ezra also was coached by James. Um, and James at the time, he surfs, like he surfs three times a day, he had mm -hmm, 90 mm -hmm. people on his team. And he just works from home. I said, I want to learn how to do that. You know, so um, he showed me everything there was to know, just one step at a time. He's very much, um, he, you know, he'll... He'll simplify everything. You'll just every week we jump on a call. What's your biggest challenge? Right. Okay. Let's talk through that. Okay. Here's the one thing you're going to do each week. So it's just gradually, step by step by step, grew a team, got all of our marketing out there. Um, and yeah, just pretty much put myself out there more. And, and um, yeah, gradually, you know, in, implemented systems. And I guess, you know, that's evolved over the years and the tools that we've used have evolved. And our main sort of um, system tool is ClickUp for project management. And yeah, and then having the right structure of team in place, we've got a general manager. I do only work 25 hours a week. So, you know, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> so um, yes. but that's because I've got an amazing general manager. And she was actually my executive assistant. We got drunk at a Christmas party one year and she said, I want to be your general manager. So she just, you know, promoted herself, which was awesome. I love that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. That's so, fantastic. Um, and she's been with us, yeah, just since started COVID basically. So, um, but yeah, and then we use ClickUp and we use, <clears throat> excuse me, Active Campaign, and we have a lot of automation. So based on how people come into our, um, our world, whether it's through a referral, whether it's through, you know, it might be a website footer link, it might be through one of our lead magnets, one of our um, uh, offer pages, you know, there's a bunch of different ways. So we have automation based on, uh, you know, just making sure we'd never lo lose a lead. We've got Sally, my general manager, has her own assistance as well that when this automation is triggered, she, the, we, we don't do automated email follow-ups for, for leads, but we have an EA go in to, um, you know, to reply to the chain of the, the thread of emails uh, that we've had communication with that client with um, and just make sure we're always personal with our uh, approach and our replies. But yeah, everything has a system and automation, but mainly through uh, Active Campaign, <clears throat> which has really good lead flow and pipelines. <clears throat> and then we have ClickUp for all of our project management and we use um, uh, Help Scout for our uh, client interface. And yeah, we have a, you know, a, a VA for our design team and one for our dev team. And yeah, there's just a lot that goes into it. Hub but, yeah. Scout. Um so Hub Scout, and I, I'm so glad you're talking about the systems because as I told you just sure. before we we went live was that I wanted to pick your brain a little bit just because you're clearly like dialed in on all your systems and, you know, and for the listener, I just would share with you that like, you know, every part of the process of scheduling this podcast, even though I am the person hosting it, I felt very much like oh, my hand was being held by, um, oh. 
by Greg with the because you because you have this podcast guesting so you have this so dialed in because you're clearly I can go and look and see that you've been on a million podcasts and you have made sure that the interviewer has everything that they need from you um and 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 then some so so i was like wow well we talk a lot about systems on this podcast and and so i wanted to ask you if you if you had like a favorite um little automation or just a little just anything you might want to share with us that that happens on the back end on the back end well i mean i try not to get involved too much i don't really understand it so sally does all good well that's the right (laughs) answer actually that's the that's what a front row entrepreneur should say got it yeah well i love the um the the book or uh and the podcast coo alliance uh um what's his name harold cameron harold yeah he's got an amazing podcast and he pretty much says, and it's all for COOs, like second in charge, what he calls them. But really, you have the the CEO who's the visionary, but they shouldn't be, they're not really an implementer. So you need somebody that's the yin and yang, the balance to that. And that's what Sally is for me. So I'm the visionary. I do all of the, um, yeah, all the stuff to get the business in, essentially. And then once we get the business, she does all the doing, all the operations. And yeah, so I don't really understand the systems. I just know they work. <laughs> I love that. That's the greatest answer. And also you've given us so many great um, resources and books and podcasts. So um, so we'll make sure and have all of that uh, linked up in the show notes. So thanks for that. Um, yeah. My audience, they, they are, they're big time readers and big time um, podcast listeners. So Excellent. Um, all right. So I would love, I don't know if you do this every year, but I remember one year you did a, you did a blog post that was um, at the end of the year, and it was like website trends to look out for for 2022 oh, yes. or whatever. Do you do that every year? We do, absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I shared it in like one of my like as a link in my newsletter as favorite things oh, or you. something, and I got so much feedback. Everybody loved it. Wow. So since we're ta- we're headed in already, I can't believe it into 2025. Yeah. What are some trends you think we should be looking out for? Yeah, absolutely. And look, I would say design trends in general, um, most of them are just created because designers get bored and obviously business want to always look like they've got the latest website, right? Not everybody, but just be careful because a lot of them will hurt conversions. Like we talked Mm. about before where there's parallax effects and animation and even dark, excuse me, dark mode. A lot of websites want dark background, but that's actually a conversion killer as well. Uh, But just, yeah, using things that are too distracting really may hurt uh, hurt your conversion. So just be careful. Don't have too much of that fancy stuff. A little bit is okay where it's a little bit interactive, but yeah, not too much of it. And so just think about um, the user experience. I think that's important. You can experiment with color and, you know, there's a lot of vivid gradients and innovative typeface, large fonts, probably less font or like less wording these days seems to be more of a trend Mm -hmm. just because people just scan websites. They haven't really got the time to read everything. Yeah, but I would say on important landing pages, you still need a lot of copy, right? But um, yeah, on most pages, you don't need as much copy as you used to have. But it makes copywriting uh, a lot harder because it has to be more concise and more clear. But I would say uh, in general, like trends that are, uh, it's, let's say, 25 and, and beyond, I would say AI is definitely a trend. Now, AI tools can actually build an entire website. We've had mm-hmm. our website ripped off up to like uh, over 20 times, I would say, in the last <gasps> year, year and a half. And there's AI, AI tools that can just grab your entire website and rebuild the whole thing exactly as is. So we've seen that and we've had to send many cease and desist le- letters lately. Um, oh, my but, goodness. So therefore, to beat that, try and think more about per- personalization, right? Um, and, you know, have more brand personality in your voice and your look and feel um, that is unique to your business and your offer. Try not to be like everybody else. And, yeah, just be, yeah, just more... Um, more personal and and also if you think about there are tools that can help with this so if you have a podcast and you might have you know 500 episodes or whatever you can use an ai bot where people can ask a question to your bot and joe does this joe from uh, hustle and flowchart podcast mm-hmm. uh, where an ai bot will and he calls it ai joe you can ask it whatever question and then it'll give you an answer based on all of the content that he's got in his podcast that's really helpful for for the listener or for the viewer on the website so that's one thing and there's another tool called video ask which is an interactive video tool where 
um, you just do some pre-recorded videos or you can use you know AI tools to create videos from your avatar. But the point is you ask questions and sorry, people ask questions, you answer them and you can send them in the right direction based on you know where they want to go essentially. So similar to that thing we talked about on Evan, but this is a little bit deeper and you're having a video conversation with them. So that's, I think that's uh, important, but yeah. As far as, and like I said, we touched on the ADA compliant thing. I think that's important, but just really focus on usability and make sure it's easy for people to, you know, to get what they want. Uh, and then I would say as well, like think of your website as something that's never finished. <laughs> you always want to update it and don't just get stuck on one trend and think it's the latest look and feel because it will be outdated in a year or two and then you have to keep chase, chasing new trends so don't chase new trends all the time um, but yeah basically just yeah keep it fresh and you might just think about changing little parts of the website but always um, add social proof every time you get new testimonials like put them on mm. your website um, you know your offers generally change update your photos videos and things like that as well just keep your website fresh in the eyes of your visitors but don't follow trends or you'll have to change it completely every couple of years. <laughs> Great advice. Thank you. I think we all needed, um, we needed those reminders. Cool. Well, listeners, if you want to audit your website yourself, Greg was kind enough to create a special link just for the listeners of the Front Row Entrepreneur Podcast. I told you this man has got it together. <laughs> um, go to studio1design.com. And that's design singular, not with an S, studio one, number one, design.com forward slash Jen. And it's this awesome, I almost hesitate to call it, call it a quiz. It really is more of an audit. Yeah. Um, it's not a, it's not a cutesy little quiz <laughs> that marketers use. It's like a legit information gathering tool. And then it's going to, it's going to give you something really cool at the end. So, uh, and he's got other goodies on his website as well. Yeah. Um, did you want to add anything yeah, to just, that? Yeah, it's just, it's going to show you 50 things across six vital areas of your website. And it's just asking you a question. Do you have this? Yes or, yes or no? Yes or no? And at the end, you'll get a score out of 50. Most websites have a score of about 15. So if you're doing better than that, then you're doing well. But it'll also show you the opportunity by all the things that you don't have that you can start implementing over time yourself. So it'll just show you what's missing to help it boost its conversions. Love it. So generous. Thank you so much. Um, you're welcome on this show anytime. Um, we're going to have to have you back um, at least, I mean, for sure, if not sooner next year, so we can talk about um, what how, how things have changed. And it'll be so interesting to see. So let's bookmark this and come back in, in about a year. Thank you so much, Jen. Yeah, it's been a great interview. And yeah, really enjoyed chatting with you. Thanks so much. Okay, take care.